what one cancer does to one person is not the same as what it will do to another person. Cancer is a collection of diseases that occurs in almost every tissue of the body by which the cells use properties that they already have, but in an improper way. So in other words, we know that cells for proper development are supposed to divide. They're supposed to move to the proper place. Sometimes they have programmed death that allows for the proper functioning of an organ. In cancer, the controls on these processes go abnormal. And so you get cells that are very asocial. They don't pay attention to proper signals telling them when to stop and when to go. And so it causes a problem for the body. When this cell is insulted in some way, when it's exposed to stress, when it's exposed to damage, what it does is it stops. It stops dividing. It stops synthesizing DNA. It stops. And the purpose of that is so that it can repair before it goes forward. Because if it continues replicating in the presence of damage, what happens is that you get mutations and cells don't like to get mutations. So this normal cell has been exposed to a negative growth signal, it's been exposed to an arrest signal, and that's what it does. The precancerous cells, they're being exposed to the same negative growth signals, but notice how they're ignoring them, how they keep dividing and keep growing, and they don't express the property of stopping. So when a cell stops, it acquires these certain characteristics the vacuolation that you see in the middle of the cell and it spreads out and attaches quite strongly to the plastic. Notice that these cells aren't doing that at all. They just keep growing as if they're ignoring whatever's happening. And that's because they've lost their checkpoints. And so these are the cells that can then go forward and acquire more mutations and contribute to the formation of cancer. As those genetic changes accumulate, these cells acquire the ability to proliferate, even though there's no signal to proliferate, the inability to die when they're supposed to, the ability to stimulate vessel growth towards them, and altered uh, cell adhesion. And so that's the difference between the precursor cells and these cells. Both of them can ignore the negative growth signals, but these now have acquired many more mutations and all of these characteristics that hallmark it as a cancer cell. The HeLa cells are like the workhorse of, of cancer research, and they have many of the characteristic properties of tumor cells. And so, especially in the early days, this is what people study to try and understand what is a cancer. When the cells undergo a division, the first step is that they round up. And as they round up, they become refractile, which is why they look like uh, bright circles. And then it divides into two and sits back down again. Here's an example of a cell that it rounded up and it tried to divide and it failed to divide. So notice how you have two nuclei in one cell. Whereas this cell has one nucleus, this cell has one nucleus. So that's one example of an abnormal mitosis. This one, the DNA probably segregated properly, divided properly, because the two nuclei look like they're equal size, but then the cell failed to divide. So you have two nuclei in one cell. In this other example that you're going to see, the DNA material didn't divide properly, and instead of dividing into two, see how it rounds up? What it does is partitions into three individual daughter cells. And of course, they can't have the proper number of chromosomes because they haven't divided properly. That cell is messed up. The other thing is, here you can see beautiful examples of how these cells interact with each other. This isn't a proper interaction, but see how they, in essence, hold hands? Here what they're doing is they're interacting with the other cells. Look at this, look at this, these strings that attach them. Isn't that neat? And see, look, this guy is trying to sense his environment, and he's sending out philopodia, blebbing out from the membrane, the cell membrane, to see what he wants to do. Healthy cells do it in a very controlled manner. These cells are doing it in a very uncontrolled manner. This guy's freaking out. <laughs> He's cute. Look at him. 
the cells reach out. They notice that there's no cells nearby. That, in a normal cell, is a signal to divide. And those cells then round up. They start dividing so that they can fill in that space. Notice that the ones behind that line very rarely divide, and that's because they're receiving negative growth signals from their surrounding cells. And so when this then fills in, this will stop dividing because it'll listen to the proper cues. These cells, on the other hand, you can see that there's quite a lot of activity, not only at the edges, but also other parts, and that they move much faster, which is one of the hallmarks of a cancer cell, and they quickly try and invade into that space and fill it up as quickly as possible with dividing cells. In some tissues, what you have is a single layer of cells that make up the tissue, the epithelial cells. Well, when that starts to become cancerous, those cells start crawling on top of each other. So it's the equivalent of somebody sitting on somebody else's head. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to sit around the table properly and, if necessary, hold hands. And here these abnormal cells are getting up onto the middle of the table and jumping up and down or sitting on people's heads or refusing to hold hands with people, walking outside of the circle. It's, a, it's an interesting way of looking at cells. If you were to look at those cells individually, you would see that it's a mess also in terms of its chromosomes, in terms of its signals, what end is up and what end is down, that they have problems. Their cells piling on top of each other, their cells floating, they don't have the proper connections with their sisters, and so they can float away, look for some place to sit down and start growing again. This is the property of metastasis. Metastasis is when they let loose, float to a different part of the body, or actively taken to a different part of the body, sit down, and start growing as a tumor. What they found is that nearly all the tissues of our body are riddled with pre-malignant lesions. So if you take a prostate from a man and you do a proper sectioning and you look very carefully, you'll find that by age 50, over half the men have little areas, not only of pre-malignancy, but of malignancy. that's just sitting there. It hasn't become a problem yet. If you do the same study with women looking at breast tissue, what you find is that there's a whole collection of the whole continuum of pre-malignancy. It's been estimated that up to over a third of women have the first step of these hyperplasias or atypical ductal hyperplasias, and that these are very, very common in the breast, in the bladder, in the lung, in the prostate, in the colon, in all these tissues. And so it starts to reprogram the question, if you will, since we know that it's so common that these early cancers are there. The question now starts to become, why aren't all of us walking around with cancer? What stops cancer from being a problem? And if we can understand that, can we improve that so that fewer people get cancer? So it's really a fascinating subject.